Okay, I know what you're thinking. Uh, didn't didn't I literally just see you like a, an hour ago when you talked about the Shadowlands Alpha even being announced? Well, uh, good news. We actually have even more uh, coming out about the Shadowlands Alpha before it even is being able to be data mined or anything. We have blog posts from Blizzard. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Missile Online, and I will be covering uh, uh, this Shadowlands, a look at Covenant class and signature abilities uh, that was just posted uh, just about an hour ago. I wanted to look at this. It is not anywhere close to done, but I thought that uh in the spirit of covering everything um <laughs> i thought that we would take a look at some of the covenant abilities and stuff that we have coming uh in shadowlands it looks like uh this won't be in the game when it launches i don't believe we have any of the uh, covenants uh so i just want to keep that in mind this is a look at where they're going with some of these abilities so i thought of course that we would uh we would take a look and um and, uh, and potentially, uh, let me zoom in a little bit there. Look at how hot that animation looks right there. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I thought that we would take a look and kind of see where they're going with this and, and, and kind of what their design philosophy is looking like at the beginning of the alpha. So, uh, for those that don't know, uh, this is a little four ruling powers control the Shadowlands, each of which is in desperate need of aid from the heroes of Azeroth. In exchange for your help, the Covenants are willing to share a piece of their power and access to the rewards and other blessings boons or temptations that they have to offer which is, sounds awesome uh, as you level up on your initial journey through each of their domains you'll get to experience the abilities they have to offer firsthand before you ultimately choose the covenant you wish to dedicate yourself to so uh potentially since we are leveling through bastion right away the alpha testers will be able to level through bastion uh, which is the kyrian area they might actually get their abilities so that might actually be around for testing uh immediately so um, they are the denizens of Bastion. These angelic beings embrace humility and service to their order. The Necrolords, comprised of liches, warlords, and spies, the Necrolord Covenant calls Maldraxxus home. They make up the army that defends the Shadowlands. Night Fae, which are beautiful, by the way. Uh, guardians of nature, the Night Fae inhabit Ardenwald and sh shepherd beings through the cycle of life and death. It was through their aid that the demigod Cenarius was able to make his return to Azeroth during the events of the Cataclysm. Because uh, remember, uh, Cenarius was killed by Grom way back in Warcraft 3. Uh, Venthyr, making their home in Revendreth, the vampiric Venthyr are the punishers of the unworthy, seeking to rehabilitate the sinful souls sent to them by the Arbiter. Very nice, which means they're out of a job in Shadowlands. Uh, when the time comes to ally with one of these four, you'll want to carefully consider the abilities the Covenant will provide you. Each, uh, each provides two abilities tailored to the theme of the Covenant. The first of these is the Covenant Signature ability, which is available to all Covenant members regardless of class, race, specialization. This ability helps you explore and engage with the world in new ways, gives you a unique tool to help provide the pro uh, to help solve the problem. I can read. Help solve the problems you encounter in the Shadowlands. The second of these abilities is specific to your class and gives you a new spell or power to use in combat. This is all subject to change, uh, and this might not make it into... It, it, potentially, this couldn't even be in the build that comes in the alpha. Also, I do apologize for uh, the appearance. Um, I did roll an 8. <clears throat> You'll get it. Uh, so it looks like the signature abilities are here. These are not, these are obviously everything is a work in progress, but uh, some abilities you'll see later on actually says work in progress. We don't even know what they even have yet. Uh, so for Kyrian, we have summon steward. Call your steward to bring you a file of serenity that can be used, uh, consumed to restore some of your health and remove all cures, diseases, poisons, and bleed effects. Your steward additionally offers access to a selection of useful amenities each once per day. So I think that this ability here, uh, the call summon steward, um, doesn't sound out of all of these. It doesn't sound the most fun, um, but it depends what this is, right? Your steward additionally offers access to a selection of useful amenities each once per day. So I think that's gonna that's gonna depend. And like obviously, if you're a dark iron dwarf or something, having this is kind of like irrelevant, right? Um, or you're a class that can remove your own stuff. Mm, like, if you're a paladin, you can bubble. You know, just, just, just saying, just pointing that out there. I guess it's off that cooldown, right? Anyways, uh, so, I, yeah, I, I think we have to see what this is. Obviously, all subject to change, so. Uh, I do think we're gonna need to see exactly what... What are these amenities? What are these useful amenities? Uh, Venthyr, simple enough. Door of Shadows. 
Wend through the shadows appearing at the targeted location, which sounds really cool to me. I'm wondering if it's going to work like the Void Elf racial or if it's going to work more like you enter into the Shadow Realm uh, for a limited amount of time and then you come out. You know what I mean? So you're you're not like uh, like how the um, uh, the Awakened Affix works in Mythic Plus. I wonder if it's going to be anything like that. That would be kind of neat. Uh, Necrolords, Fleshcraft. This one sounds... I, this one's great. Uh, form a shield of flesh and bone that prevents damage equal to a portion of your maximum health. Standing near the corpse of a defeated enemy when the ability is cast will create a larger shield. I just love the... I love the idea that you're literally using the flesh and bone of the thing you just defeated to stop yourself from taking damage. That's disgusting. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Night Fae has soul shape. Turn into a Vulpin. Do we know what a Vulpin is? Hang on. Do we know what a Vulpin is? Vulpin, wow. I don't think we know what... Do we know what that is? I don't think we know what that is. Anyways, uh, you turn into a Vulpin, increasing movement speed. You may reactivate soul shape to teleport a short distance forward. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, uh, oh, this will definitely be a like a, like a farming... That's something you're going to want if you're farming, uh, potentially uh, herbing, mining, all that jazz. Uh, additional cosmetic forms can be earned and collected through a variety of gameplay. While out in the world, this effect has a short duration before it wears off, but lasts indefinitely while in a rest area. So, Oribus getting around the capital city that we have in Shadowlands, you can just constantly be... That? Okay. Uh, and also, can we talk about additional cosmetic forms can be earned and collected through a variety of gameplay? Can we please do cosmetic for all of these? Like something cosmetic? Please. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but unlocking cosmetic stuffs is is even better for, to me than like gear, um, because it lasts. It lasts. You know what I mean? You can you can do it any time, forever. It doesn't. Next patch doesn't get rid of it, right? And some of them look really cool. Uh, so so yeah, that's the Night Fae. They have soul shape, which sounds really cool. Uh, so that's the that is the signature abilities that everyone will get if they pick that that um, that covenant. So while you're leveling your first main character through the leveling experience, you'll get to experience all of those. So that when you actually hit uh, level sixty, you'll be able to make uh, an informed decision, which I think is awesome. Very good. Uh, aligning with a specific covenant provides access to class abilities that provide additional combat oriented gameplay options that are still tailored to the theme of the covenant every covenant offers an ability for each class but note that some covenant class abilities are still in development and are not currently represented um also can we just take a moment to look at some of these animations i absolutely love this like this blue that they have uh for anybody that has the eternal travelers hearthstone you can actually have that right now in game if you pre-ordered uh shadowlands and that it has a similar effect to this with the line the wispy lines and everything it looks really really cool in fact that animation i actually thought was the hearthstone at first i thought they were showing off the hearthstone but that's uh i believe the priest ability um the first one is the warrior ability from bastion this one is the priest ability um so i just wanted to uh, point that out uh, Bastion Covenant ability shown for Priest and War. There you go. See, told you. Um, <laughs> although, yeah. Uh, anyways, um, so my thing is, is that what what's kind of too bad about these, right, is it's all going to come down for a lot of people. It's going to come down to what's to tuning. These aren't necessarily what's more fun, right? People are going to choose what performs the best in a raid environment, uh, especially since I'm assuming that these class abilities do work in a raid i'd be very surprised if they don't but obviously that's going to be something that uh, we'll see as as alpha and beta uh, progresses um but i just thought you know it's interesting that you know even though something might feel better like uh, in a flavor way um you know obviously some people are going to have to go with whatever performs best in mythic plus or, or raid or pvp whatever uh, which i'm assuming i'm assuming these abilities will work in those i don't i don't know um i haven't played the it's not out yet so uh, <laughs> all right, so right here we have uh, Kyrians will be on top, or Kyrian, Kyrian, uh, you get the, you, uh, Vinthyr, Necrolords, Night Fae, um, so remember that as we go down this list. Uh, so for Death Knights, it looks like they have a preliminary all four of these. Uh, for Kyrian, they get Shackle the Unworthy, admonish, admonish your target for their past trans transgressions, reducing the damage they deal to you and dealing arcane damage over time. Shackle the Unworthy's cooldown is reduced when you damage the affected enemy with a rune spending attack. Um, so obviously if you can, if you can dump all of your runes into something and get it back up, uh, this is a huge defensive cooldown, right? Um, we'll see what obviously take 
all of this with a grain of salt. We don't know what the actual numbers are going to be, but uh, sounds so like it'd be pretty useful for a tank or obviously a solo DK, I guess. Um, swarming mist, a heavy mist. This is Vinthyr. A heavy mist surrounds you, increasing your chance to dodge. Deals shadow damage over time to enemies within range. Every time it deals damage, you gain additional runic power up to a maximum amount. Pretty pretty basic. This feels like a, a cool flavor part of the ability, whereas this feels like what it's actually there for, right? Uh, like, I don't think you'd use it as a as a dodge cooldown. You'd use it as, as this ability here. Uh, Abomination Limb, which sounds amazing, and I just played Resident Evil 3, and this reminds me of Nemesis in Resident Evil 3. Sprout an additional limb for a limited time, dealing shadow damage to nearby enemies. If an enemy is farther away from you, they are pulled to your location. That's Necro Lords, which if you're a Death Knight and you're not going Necro Lord, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Uh, that, that ability sounds amazing. Uh, that sounds super cool. I can't wait to see what that is, what that looks like. I imagine like the big meaty tentacle thing coming out of you like Nemesis. Uh, all right, we got Night Fae for, uh, they give Death's Dew, which replaces your Death and Decay. I, I want to point out that out of all of these, this is the only one that I've seen so far that replaces an existing ability. Uh, corrupts the targeted ground, causing shadow damage over a duration of time to targets within the area. Affected enemies deal reduced damage to you, up to a maximum amount, and their power is transferred to you as an equal amount of strength. That is sounds cool to me while you remain within the area your necrotic strike and heart strike will hit additional targets scourge strike and clawing shadows will hit all enemies near the target um that sounds awesome like that that is going to be like a big aoe thing so that has me wondering if we're going to be able to easily switch covenants I could have sworn at BlizzCon they said we weren't going to be able to easily switch covenants that there was going to be some type of uh, price for that but like you know, if you're going into a Mythic Plus fortified uh, uh, teaming week, right? You're going to want something like death, Death's do potentially, it sounds like. So I wonder if it's going to be easy to switch like that. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Next, we have uh, Demon Hunter. The uh, Necro Lord one is a work in progress, so we can't cover that. Uh, Elysian Decree. Carve runes into the... This is for the Bastion folks. Uh, into the ground in front of you, which detonate to deal arcane damage and shatter lesser soul fragments from enemies. Just another way to get uh, soul fragments and, and do some damage. Um, sounds cool. I like the idea of, like, carving the runes into you. It reminds me of uh, Archimond in Warcraft 3. He, like, carves these runes into the ground and it makes Dalaran show up and then he swipes his hand through it. it super... It, you know, sounds cool. Uh, Sinful Brand. Brand an enemy with the mark of the Venthyr, reducing their melee and casting speeds and inflicting shadow damage over time. Activating Metamorphosis applies Sinful Brand to all nearby enemies. That sounds super, super cool to me. Um, I can see that being very useful in something like Torghast where you're solo or something. Even in PvP, if that, again, if these abilities are in those, in these specific scenarios, uh, I think that's, that sounds really cool. Finally, uh, my favorite Probably my favorite ability in this entire thing, uh, which is the hunt. For anyone that has played Warcraft 3 and has played a Demon Hunter in Warcraft 3, um, for anyone that has played uh, Heroes of the Storm and play, has played Illidan, uh, this is reminds me of uh, one of his ultimates. Uh, so it sounds awesome. It is the hunt. Charge to an enemy, inflicting nature damage and rooting them. The target is marked for a period of time, increasing your fury from Demon's Bite and Sheer against them you may reactivate the hunt every 30 seconds to teleport behind the marked target and ignoring line of sight you may reactivate the hunt every 30 seconds to teleport behind the target and ignoring line of sight so um i'm sorry if you're a ranged player uh because demon hunter is still gonna be on your butt uh what's super cool about this um uh or, or uh maybe not cool is not the right word in uh revealing about this is increasing your fury from Demon's Bite and Sheer. And if you saw in the previous video, they announced something about how um, resource changes. So I'm wondering if they will be taking the Demon Hunters and giving them uh, just one one resource across both uh, uh, both Vengeance and Havoc. I wonder if they're going to say, hey, uh, here you go. It sounds like that, right? Your fury from Demon's Bite and Sheer against them, which sounds cool. Pain, pain being your resource is, you know some S&M stuff, so. All right, on to Druid. 
They get kindred spirits, form a bond with an ally on a cooldown. This is symbiosis, if you guys remember symbiosis. Uh, you may empower the bond for a period of time, granting you an effect based on your partner's role and granting them an effect based on your role. Essentially, symbiosis sounds pretty cool. Um, I don't remember why symbiosis didn't last very long, but, uh, well, maybe they're trying it out again. Ravenous Frenzy. This is for Venthyr. Uh, for a period of time, druid spells you cast increase your damage, healing, and haste by a percentage stacking. If you spend a period of time idle, the frenzy overcomes you, consum consuming a percentage of your health per stack, stunning you, and then ending. This sounds amazing. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, Surrender to Madness. Obviously, it doesn't work in the same way, the priest, uh, the Shadow Priest ability uh, or talent. It doesn't, it's obviously not quite quite that but it, it it feels reminiscent i kind of like that a lot like the idea of a feral druid going into a ravenous frenzy sounds really cool to me uh adaptive swarm command a swarm that heals or deals shadow damage to a target and increases the effectiveness of your periodic effects on them that could be very good for balance uh, upon expiration, travels to a new target within range, alternating between friend and foe up to a set number of times. That's interesting. So you can use this ability. This is the Necrolord one. And it will actually affect your allies. It will actually hurt them. So you could cause... Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, and finally, probably the coolest ability I think I've ever heard of ever. Uh, convoke the spirits. Call upon the Night Fae for an eruption of energy, channeling a rapid flurry of 16 druid spells and abilities over four seconds you will cast moonfire wrath regrowth rejuvenation thrash rake shred and iron fur on appropriate nearby targets favoring your current specialization so if you have so let's say uh you so the, potentially the way this ability is going to work is you have uh four enemies in front of you four of your druid abilities will each hit one right or they'll you know what I mean? Each one will get hit by four of your abilities. But if it's just one, that one gets hit by all 16. Obviously, healing and regrowth and stuff doesn't really count iron fur. That just sounds really fun to me, especially if I'm imagining like this animate, like these super fast four second animations of every single one of those. That sounds um, that sounds awesome to me. And I well, I can't wait to see. I can't wait this in particular, uh, because I think I think they might know that most druids are probably going to go with the Night Fae. Uh, it kind of fits into the druid aesthetic yeah, a little bit, yeah. Um, so I feel like I feel like they're going to... They're probably going to put one of the coolest druid abilities <laughs> um, in, in that one, right? Uh, Hunter. We have uh, nothing for the Night Fae uh, work in progress at the moment, but they have Resonating Arrow for Bastion. Fire a Resonating Arrow to the target location. Fill the era, area with Echoing Anima. The effect causes your attacks to ignore line of sight to enemies in the area, and you have an increased critical strike chance against them. That sounds amazing. Uh, good luck getting away from an aim shot in that scenario. Uh, flame shot. Fire a shot at your enemy, causing them to bleed shadow damage over a period of time. Each time flayed shot deals damage, you gain a chance. Uh, you have a chance to gain flayer's mark, causing your next kill shot is back uh, to be usable on any target, regardless of their current health. That sounds fun. <laughs> uh, Death Chakram. Throw a deadly Chakram at your current target, which will rapidly deal additional shadow damage. Each time the Chakram damages a different target, its damage is increased, and you generate additional focus. Um, so again, that sounds like an AoE. I I've noticed that the Necrolords seem to be a lot of AoE, um, which is cool. Uh, um, again... I mean, these these sound fun. Resonating Arrow sounds super fun. Uh, Flayed Shot sounds pretty fun. Um, especially if you are uh, like a Beastmaster potentially might be really cool in that scenario. All right, moving down, we have Mage, which has all four uh, listed here. Radiant Spark. Conjure a Radiant Spark that causes arcane damage instantly and additional damage over time. The target takes a percentage of increased damage from your direct damage spells, stacking each time they are struck. This effect ends after a number of spells. Uh, obviously, I think that's going to be super fun uh, for most specs, right, uh, as a mage? Uh, but fire in particular, um, imagine having a ton of instant pyroblast. And in a combust window, also using radiant spark might be pretty fun. Uh, Mirrors of Torment. This one sounds really neat. 
Conjure mirrors to torment the enemy for a time. Whenever the target casts a spell or ability, a mirror is consumed to inflict shadow damage and their movement and cast speed are slowed. The final mirror will instead inflict shadow damage to the enemy, rooting and silencing them for some time. In PvP, that just sounds super fun to me. Like, super fun. Hi, Beanie. Um, I just like the idea, uh, especially of the Venthyr, of having, like, all of these mirrors around you. It just plays in... I, I, a lot of these play into the class fantasy and the uh, the covenant fantasy, I think, really well together. Um, Deathborn. This one's just fun. Uh, transform into a powerful skeletal mage for a period of time. Nice. While in a form in the form of a skeletal mage, your Frostbolt, Fireball, and Arcane Blast are greatly enhanced and your spell damage is increased. So just another big fat cooldown. Uh, shifting power. Draw from the ground beneath you for a period of time, dealing nature damage over time to nearby enemies. While channeling, your ability cooldowns are reduced. So I have a feeling that something like this could end up being like what and what ends up being best, you know, in in because of number tuning and stuff. If if none of these really do enough damage, um, ha being able to have your combust cooldown lowered or icy veins or what have you. Um, I have a feeling that we'll see. We'll probably see something along those lines. Uh, it all it all depends on on tuning, of course, of course. Uh, for monk, we only have this one from Bastion. Again, it makes sense they're focusing on Bastion because that is the first leveling experience that we get. Don't worry, monks, they don't hate you. Uh, they're just fleshing out what works. Uh, well, maybe they hate you. I I don't know. Uh, weapons of order for a short duration, your mastery is increased by a percentage. In addition, Windwalker's Rising Sun Kick cooldown is reset instantly, and your Rising Sun Kick reduces the cost of your Chi abilities. Hmm. Brewmaster's Keg Smash cooldown is reset, and enemies hit by Keg Smash take increased damage from you. Stacks up to a set amount. That sounds fun. Uh, I like that. I like being able to... I, as a tank, I, I, I really like being able to contribute to the, the fight in more ways than just getting hit. Uh, so that sounds, that sounds pretty fun. Uh, Miss Weaver's Essence font cooldown is reset instantly and heals nearby enemies on channel start and end. Ooh, okay. So, okay, so it heals, like, it, there's a burst of healing right away, and then it does its thing, and then there's a burst of healing when it goes away. Yeah, this sounds, Weapons of Order sounds, sounds pretty neat. Um, the Windwalker one in particular sounds like it would be a lot of fun. Very cool. Uh, for Paladins, we only have two right now. We have the Venthyr and the uh, Bastion folks. Divine Toll. Instantly cast Holy Shock, Avenger's Shield, or Judgment on several targets within range, based on your current specialization. Uh, this one sounds cool. I'm expecting that means uh, uh, maybe a talent change of some kind um, for prop Paladins, maybe, potentially. Um, imagine if uh, Glimmerdins were still a thing and Divine Toll was in the game. Just everything around you just gets holy shocked. <laughs> uh, Ashen Hollow. Hollow the target area, dealing shadow damage split among enemies and restoring health split among injured allies over time. The land remains filled with anima, causing additional shadow damage to all enemies. You gain the benefits of Consecrate while within the area. Um, so it is a stronger Consecrate. It's a Consecrate that allows you to heal injured allies and also do damage split. So if there's only one enemy, you're actually doing more damage to him. Um, it remains filled with anima forever, causing additional shadow damage to all enemies. If that is like a permanent, you put a permanent Consecrate, um, that could be pretty neat. You gain the benefits of Consecrate while within the area. Yeah, that could be really fun to just pull more things into that very specific spot. Um, there might be some times where that's a, a, a good time. Interesting. Uh, for Priest, we have Boon of the Ascended. Gain the Boon of the Ascended, granting access to Ascended Nova and Ascended Blast, and increasing your movement speed. Both abilities damage your enemies, heal your allies, and build power that will erupt in a powerful explosion of damage and healing at the end of Boon of the Ascended's duration. See, I feel like they looked at what what class fantasy these players would probably lean towards, and they made like the coolest looking ones for those, right? Like Divine Toll sounds awesome uh, to go to go with Bastion. Most paladins, I'm assuming, are probably going to go Bastion or the Kyrians. So priests probably in the same boat, right? Maybe Venthyr or, or Necro Lords if they're Shadow. Uh, but the point is, is it, it sounds really cool. Like this ascended, this boon of the ascended sounds sounds awesome. Um, mind games. Assault an enemy's mind, dealing shadow damage and briefly reversing their perception of reality. 
For a period of time, the next damage they deal will heal their target, and the next healing they do will damage their... Wait a minute! That is super fun! Oh, that that's gonna be fun. Mind games. I like that. Imagine, imagine like, being in an arena and accidentally killing your ally because you didn't realize the priest had pushed mind games on you. Uh, Unholy Nova. An explosion of dark energy heals nearby allies and infects nearby enemies with Unholy Transfusion. Unholy Transfusion deals shadow damage over time. Enemies who damage this target receive healing. Enemies who damage this target receive healing. So if you use Unholy Transfusion and say it's like a big pack, but there's a priority target and everyone focuses that, they'll actually be getting healing. Um, that sounds fun. This actually sounds really neat. The priest, the whole priest uh, uh, covenant kit sounds really neat. Uh, Rogue. Ooh, we got a bit here, man. Echoing Reprimand. Deal arcane damage to an enemy, extracting their anima to anima charge a combo point. So just a free combo point. Damaging finishing moves that consume the same number of your combo points as your anima charge deal damage as if they consume seven combo points. Oh. Okay. That sounds fun. Slaughter. Slaughter the target, causing physical damage. The target's anima mixes with your lethal poisons, coating your weapons for the next five minutes. Slaughter the target, causing physical... That sounds slaughter. Slaughter poison deals shadow damage over time and steals a percentage of healing done to the target. Nice. This also awards combo points. That sounds cool. That sounds really cool. I, I, I'm just imagining all the uses of some of these and like... I, again, I think it's going to come down to so like numbers, right? A lot of these seem really fun and like you would want to go certain ways. If they can keep these balanced... That would uh, be incredible. I don't know if they can, but like if they can, that'd be incredible. Uh, serrated bone spike. Embed a bone spike in the target, dealing physical damage over time until they die. Attacking with serrated bone spike causes all of your active bone spikes to fracture and strike your current target, increasing initial damage by a percentage per strike. Hmm. So that is is that's that's Glimmerdens. But in a in a rogue fashion, serrated bone spike. Attacking with serrated bone causes all of your active bone spikes to fracture and strike your current target, increasing initial. That's funny. So instead of yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I think they learned that Glimmerdim was so fun that people you know. <laughs> uh, shamans. We have Vesper Totem. Summon a totem at the target location for thirty seconds. Your next three damage spells or abilities will cause the tar uh, totem to radiate arcane damage to nearby enemies. And your next three healing spells will heal up to six allies near the totem. Casting this ability again while the totem is active will relocate the totem. So it's just a it's a, a, a totem that essentially redirects healing and, and damage. That's cool. Uh, chain Harvest. Send a wave of anima at the target, which then jumps to additional nearby targets. Deal shadow damage to enemies and restores health to allies. For each target critically, strike, uh, critically struck, the cooldown of Chain Harvest is reduced. That sounds cool, which then jumps to additional nearby targets. So you could just cast that and it's going to keep bouncing. And that, that makes sense. I mean, I feel like that makes sense, right? With chain heal and everything. Like that feels like a shaman. That's awesome. Uh, all right. So we have warlock, warrior, warlock and warrior left, of course, because this is alphabetically. Uh, for warlock, we have scouring tithe. Deal arcane damage instantly and additional arcane damage over time. If the target dies while affected by scouring tithe, you generate additional soul shards. If they survive, the cooldown is refreshed. Ooh, nice. Uh, impending catastrophe. Call forth a cloud. This is for Venthyr. Uh, call forth a cloud of chaotic anima that travels to the target enemy, dealing shadow damage to enemies within their path. When the anima reaches the target, it explodes, inflicting a random curse and dealing shadow damage to all nearby enemies. A cloud of chaotic anima. To all enemies. That one sounds fun. Decimating Bolt. Hurl a bolt of shadow magic at your target, dealing shadow damage, increasing the damage of your next incinerate, drain souls, or shadow bolt. Uh, decimation Bolt's damage and the bonus both increase as your target's health decreases. Oh! Man, some of these, some of these combination plays that they're introducing with these covenant abilities sound awesome. Uh, makes sense, though. Again, I think... If you're going to be a warlord, you potentially might go with decimating with uh with with the um 
uh, with the Necrolords, right? Kind of makes sense. Um, it's kind of neat that they go with uh, the... Again, it's it feels like they're doing that. I can't... I, I don't know how many times I've said, that sounds fun during this, but they all do. They sound super cool. Uh, this one in particular for the for the Warlock, I think is my favorite, Decimating Bolt, uh, which is a good thing I'm going Necrolord on my, on my Warlock because that sounds awesome. Uh, cool. I can't wait to see what they end up doing for Night Fae, though. Like, how do you, how do you incorporate this, like, nature and this warlock demon-esque thing. And finally, we have the warriors. The Spear of Bastion. Throw a Kyrian Spear at the target location, dealing arcane damage instantly, uh, dealing additional damage over time, and generating rage. Enemies hit are tethered to the Spear of Bastion's location for the duration. That sounds awesome. That sounds super cool. To keep everything uh, in one spot, they can't run out. Mm. I wonder how long it'll last. That'll be awesome. Condemn. It re oh, this is a... Uh, I missed this one. This one actually re replaces Execute. So we have this and in, in, uh, just one more other that replaces Death and Decay. Um, those are the only ones that I've seen to replace something so far. Condemn a foe to suffer for their sins causing shadow damage. Only usable on enemies who are above 80% health or below 20% health. The primary target is weakened, preventing a moderate amount of damage they would deal to you. Hmm. If your foe survives, a portion of the rage spent is refunded. Interesting. Well, that's just gonna be that's just gonna be fun for most open world stuff, right? Throw it out by the time it's off. Throw it out again. Hmm. Maybe things will die too fast. Uh, Conqueror's banner. Brandish the banner of the Necrolords, increasing your movement speed and causing Mortal Strike, Raging Blow, and Shield Slam to grant you glory. Killing an enemy grants additional stacks of glory. Reactivating this ability plants the banner in the ground, granting an increased amount of maximum health and additional attack speed to you and your allies within range of the banner. Last additional time per glory up to a maximum amount. What? That sounds... That... Okay. That is so warrior... Like, that feels so warrior to me. I'm curious what... Okay, so we've gone through all this, so Night Fae's not there. I'm curious. I was going to say, that sounds so warrior to me, but, like, you know, I, I, I play everything, right? But my main main is a paladin, obviously. <laughs> so I'm curious what you guys, that, that some of these, obviously, are going to be your main. Some of these, you're, you're going to know inside and out better than me. Uh, but I'm curious, uh, you guys, in the comment, what do you think about some of these, some of these flavors for this like conqueror's banner to me sounds uh exactly like i imagine my warrior to be right going in and charging in with this this flag puts it down and for his allies and stands there and takes everything like i i love that i think that sounds great um that sounds very much uh to me like like a warrior um just like the decimating bolt uh sounds like a warlock um the shaman the chain harvest kind of sounds like a shaman right the rogue serrated bone spike kind of just sounds cool um slaughter sounds uh, the most um roguey i guess out of that uh potentially yeah potentially uh priest boon of the ascended right mind game sounds fun but boon of the like all of these have something that feels very inherent to to what that class is um and what th working with a covenant in particular would do for that class that already has that bias you know what i mean uh so i'm definitely curious to hear what you guys what you guys think about these um now again this is super early we're not sure how this is going to go this has actually been a pretty long video since we looked at everything and kind of deep dived into what we got in this blog post uh but i i can't wait to to see this actually in the game uh which again is probably going to be this week uh and i i hope to see you guys uh while we cover this i'm going to try to cover as much as i possibly can in the beta or i mean the alpha um if i main it and uh and hopefully hopefully you guys will will be there to uh to watch and hang out so I appreciate you guys hanging out. Let me know again. I, I really want to hear what you guys what you guys think of some of these abilities. Um, I think I again I think a lot of it is going to come down to tuning, right? There are certain abilities that sound great from a flavor point of view, and I and I want to roll those. Uh, but there might be abilities that just end up being too good to pass up in certain situations, right? Like I saw some that would be very very good in PVE or uh, PVP, uh, but potentially not that great in a raid or not that great in a, a mythic plus, right? Um. So, 
you know, who, who knows how they're even going to implement this, right? Some of these covenant abilities, they might not even be able to be used in, in raid or, or dungeons. Uh, and if they've said otherwise, please let me know. Cause I, I actually am not sure off the top of my head if they said anything, I assume that we'll be able to use these abilities in everything. Um, uh, but if, if I'm wrong, please let me know. Uh, anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out and watching, uh, some more Shadowlands Alpha stuff. This has just been a deep dive, uh, and I hope to get, uh, a lot more to you guys in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, never give up, never surrender. I'll see you guys over on twitch.tv slash missile online and in Shadowlands. Goodbye, everyone.